If you go to yoga just to get a workout, I have some news for you. You might need a little more balance in your life. The first time I went to yin yoga was quite an experience. So here are 10 thoughts that I had the first time I went to yin yoga. So I walk into the room and there's all these little candles flickering on the ground. And I'm thinking, mm, are we going to sit in a circle with clasped hands and try and strike up a conversation with some local spirits? I'm looking around and I see these straps and these big cushion pillow things all over the place. Uh, where's the film crew? Ah, okay, those big pillow things? They're called bolsters and whoa, are they great. We were instructed to lay down against these bolsters so that our shoulders would be elevated slightly above our hips and then told to close our eyes, connect with your breath. So let me paint a picture for you. Here we are, a group of adults, laying back on our bolsters in a blissful state. And suddenly it occurred to me, I can't remember the last time I did something to just be. It was nice for about a minute. Why are we staying in this position for what feels like literally an eternity? After about a minute and a half, I thought our Gyan instructor had either completely forgot about us or packed up all of her chakras to leave and go and grab a late brunch. But then, all of a sudden, her voice filled the room and washed over me like a cool, gentle wave. She explained how we hold a lot of stress in our hips, helping to loose up any pent up tension we have, blah, 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 blah. So after about two minutes and 45 seconds, I start to get irritated at the general stillness of this pose. Maybe we're loosening up for some intense, bendy, fast poses, right? Wrong. Now onto our next pose, pigeon. One leg straight out behind with the other in front of us, flexed at the knee with the shin parallel to the mat, okay. So, this is the nature of yin. Holding poses for three to five minutes with the intention of surrendering yourself to the discomfort and finding peace in stillness. Holy crap, thinking about not thinking is hard. So, we're done in our second side of pigeon and I'm laying in a seated forward fold trying not to fidget. And I'm realizing how hard it is just to accept being still and keep my mind clear. Then, enlightened speaker Eckhart Tolle just pops into my mind. Thinking has become a disease. The mind is a superb instrument if used rightly. Used wrongly, however, it becomes very destructive. Man, that Eckhart Tolle, he's onto something. Breathing is really hard. I guess the idea here is to connect with your breath. Inhale, exhale, through the discomfort of each pose. Oh my God, I never realized how much I've held my breath. I feel like I'm suffocating. I feel like I'm casually suffocating. The thoughts that surface in these moments are weird. Suddenly, I have a flashback, third grade. I give my crush, an older gentleman, he was a fifth grader, a note professing my love. And I remember being rejected. I felt the same rush of embarrassment as if it was happening all over again. Then I thought about my mom and that, oh my gosh, I, I need to call her more often. I need to be a better daughter in general. I began to feel things that were unsettling and made me sad. I felt that clench in the pit of my stomach. You know, you know the one you feel right before you're about to cry? Afterwards, I realized I wasn't just challenging my body to push through its uncomfortable limits. I was putting my mind to the test. Then, just like that, I let that shit go.